got maximum exposure. And we got the deal on the reveal. Hey, just because they're pregnant don't mean we can't judge them in a really shallow way. Sexy skydivers go down at 100 miles an hour. A car salesman will give you the shirt off his back well, and his pants and his underwear. A cop turns down some drunk and sloppy love it. Just because a guy steals panties don't make him a pervert, does it? A private eye catches a husband carrying on in public. Hint, that ain't his wife. And the greatest story we've ever told. Pick up your eyeballs and put them back in your sockets, because we are, like, totally overexposed. Hey, I'm perfectly okay. I drink, I had fun, I dance, but I'm okay. Max X. Like, totally exposed, dude. This is West Valley, Utah. Looks like a beer drinker's bikini contest. But this is a beauty contest for pregnant women. And we love women who aren't afraid to show some skin while they're pregnant. 18 moms-to-be. Some looking like they're ready to pop. Are competing for a first place prize of a thousand bucks. You can only hope your mom looked this fine when she was carrying you. Before we announce the winner, it's only fair you get a chance to cast your vote. Take a good look. Okay, let's see if your pick matches the judges. And our winner for 1998 is... The winner is... Sherry Bingham. Sherry. Sherry. Is it wrong to think pregnant women can be sexy? Nah, we don't think so. There's never a bad reason to show lingerie. And this is as good as any. These nearly bare naked ladies are skydivers. They're getting ready to let it all hang out at 5,000 feet. You open the door. Just your moves, ladies. Why am I doing something crazy like this? We don't know and we don't care. We're just happy you're doing it. It's showtime. Ladies climb on board and off they go. Are there any FAA rules against women in lingerie sitting on a pilot's lap? Nah, not in our world. Okay, make sure your tray table is in an upright position. Sit back and enjoy the view. are big with the lingerie. Time to land. Now the true Max X chick would stick the landing in her three inch bumps. Oh yeah. <laughs> Students on a charter plane, 30,000 feet in the sky, and not a parent in sight. That can only mean one thing. Time for a wet t-shirt contest. Lovely students take part. Hey, we need a judge. Where's a judge? Hey, how about the male flight attendant? They're saying that they weren't going to land the plane until we actually had the wet t-shirt content. I didn't want to be up there. But at the same time, you kind of feel pressured to be up there. Mikkel ain't digging having her breast soaked in water. There's me right there in the blue. The male flight attendants are having a real hard time picking a winner. So they bring all the women in the cockpit and ask the pilots to pick one. I was a little worried because there's five of us in there. 
jammed into this tiny little area with three of the pilots. And they're having us do twirl around so that the pilots can see us. And the pilots start judging us from there. The winner received the money. It was about $150 worth. Everyone loves a winner. Well, almost everyone. When one of the girls shows this tape to her mom, mom went ballistic. I mean, who's flying this airplane? Who the hell is flying this airplane? And every time I see this tape, I get chills because this is totally against all FAA regulations. If there had been turbulence during that contest, that cockpit door was open, kids would have gone flying into the cockpit. Who knows what would have happened? These dudes picked the wrong mom to mess with. Vicky takes the tape to the FAA, and this crew crashes and burns. The two flight attendants had been fired and had been fined $5,000 apiece. The captain had uh, been fined and suspended. The second officer, the same thing had happened to him. The thing that I regret the most is that I didn't stand up and say, no, I don't want to do this. I should have said, no, I, I'm not going to do this. But she gets her revenge. Thanks to this, like, totally overexposed video. The Max X Consumers Report for the best car salesman in the country was just released. But number one, the Chevy dealer in Hollywood, California. Check out how far they'll go to close a deal. This guy volunteers to take a dart in the foot. This is gonna hurt. If it hits somewhere else, I'm gonna find this. moment in car salesmanship. Again in slow motion. This salesman thinks he can handle the pain of being darted in the foot. Bring it on. There's the dart. And now the pain. That was nice, but this is the moment that made this dealership number one. This salesman is on one of the busiest streets in Los Angeles, and he's about to drop trial. There he goes. In a place as jaded as L.A., this guy manages to get a rise out of motorists. ladies we can't show you his hood ornament or his butt but this woman seems to dig it nice show dude how could you not want to buy a car from this guy max x we're an open freaking book next ladies learn how to talk your way out of police custody i can't help it it's so good New Wandy Delight will make your panties so fresh, a guy will want to steal them. A tip from Max Axe. Commit a crime can make you hot and sweaty. Make sure you keep a fan handy to cool yourself down. You take this woman to be your lawfully wedded arresting officer? And girls, you don't want to bring home to mama, but maybe to papa. If that ain't raw enough for you, check out our Max X list. Who needs the internet when you got Max X? Max X. You can run, but you can't hide. Is your pain used? Are you all right? This woman was hauled into the police station, suspected of driving under the influence. Welcome to Charm School for the Drunk. Today's lesson is for the ladies. How to weasel out of being booked for DUI. Step one, put a smile on your arresting officer's face. We'll be administered a breath test to determine your blood alcohol content. Yes, I will. <laughs> If you take the yes, test, I will. If you take the test, you had your looking In case you missed it, she cleverly called the cop a good looking now comes the real test. Can you put a smile on his face? 
And the laughs keep coming. You got them laughing. Step two, make your move. I was more tickled than anything. I just, I couldn't believe the things she was saying. All right, which part don't you understand? I don't want to say nothing. All right, love. Wait, wait. Well, I just know you're good looking. I, I appreciate it, man. Let me, you got to understand this, so I'll give you so this. So beautiful. <laughs> Step three, turn up the heat. God, to give you this test. It's so beautiful to me. Y'all just don't know the same nothing. <laughs> Come on now, you're going to let me read this to you, okay? Heaven God, that's so beautiful. Let's tell you, beautiful. which part don't you understand? I don't understand nothing. Nothing. Will you take this test? Because you're beautiful. Will you blow this machine for me? Yeah, I'll be She became slightly enamored with me, I think. Um, I'm sure it was the alcohol. Step four, sell your assets. My name should be done. I agree. Sign what's on I'm Irish. You are? Yes, I'm Irish. Hot-blooded. Hot-blooded. Okay. Yeah, you better know I'm hot-blooded, boy. Dude, Step five. Foreplay is over. It's time to close the deal. She's gonna she gonna tell you how to blow on some shame, okay? I never blow on that fing much shame. You're not gonna blow on the I'm not blowing you, baby. No, we can't do that. <laughs> that was uh that was pretty hilarious. That was I said this is this has got to be the craziest person that I've dealt with in a while. She was crazy for you, all right, Officer yeah. Walker. Yeah. Well come here, boy. Come here. I'm gonna kiss you. I wanna kiss you. I need some love, baby. Now, what kind of crime would you expect to get in Beaver County, Pennsylvania? What else? A panty thief. A Beaver Creek resident reported to police that her underwear was mysteriously disappearing from her clothesline. Our victim has two children. And I picture myself or picture yourself as being a, a mother and a wife, how you'd feel coming out of your door every day doing one of these. You're looking all corners and wondering who's watching me. So Beaver County Police set up a sting. A lot of underwear. No Beaver County panty thief could ever resist this temptation. Sure enough, it doesn't take long for Beaver County cops to catch their man. And wouldn't you know it, our Beaver County Panty Bandit also has a mullet. Now you gotta love this guy's excuse for stealing all that sexy clothing. He claims he wants to use them to build slingshots. What do you expect from one of Beaver County's leading citizens? some robbers who are real pros and then there are those who clearly never read the big crime handbook chapter one never mistake a department store warehouse for a good place to jerk off your pants chapter two don't practice your favorite dance number half nude in front of a fan Chapter 3. Don't waste precious time trying on the new clothes you're stealing. Chapter 4. Don't be greedy and steal more stuff than you can carry to your car in one trip. Chapter 5. No matter how hot you get, don't give in to the urge to get naked again. violated any of these rules, you might as well just accept the fact that you're a moron.
and you're going to get arrested and do hard time. In which case, that new dance will probably be a really big hit with your cellmate. That's right. We give a maximum exposure. Coming up, tough guys take down a ruthless paper boy crime ring. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to get busted. You may now kiss the cop. And a little something for the ladies. And co -ads. Nothing but co -ads. Now that's all fine and good, but what you really need to see is our Max X list. Max X. We're high on life, damn it. Max X, we won't be denied. Few things are more exciting than a bride pack and some serious heat. Think the lips are kind good? Yeah. Good. This bride's a cop, and that snub nose between her legs is going to be used to help arrest most of her wedding guests. This ain't no real wedding. It's an elaborate police sting near Flint, Michigan. Everyone on the invite list is a suspected druggie. The groom is actually undercover cop Lacey Brown. And over the past six months, he's been buying and selling drugs to most of the wedding guests. None of them have a clue that before the night is over, they'll be busted looking for a way to post bail. Cops ain't taking any chances. All guests are asked to check their weapons at the door. The highlight of the night is supposed to be an appearance by a big-time drug lord, Fast Eddie Leno. The guests don't know that Fast Eddie is actually police chief Ed Boyce. Everybody loves a wedding, right? So uh, when it wound down, uh, we had plenty of people that uh, wanted to attend, and it was really, really great. Anyone who ain't a guest is a cop. <laughs> the preacher's back in heat under his robe. Even the band is in on the act. Check out their t-shirts. A marijuana leaf and the letters S-P-O-C. The t-shirt stands for somebody protect our crop. <laughs> that's, what, that's what the t-shirt stands for. <laughs> S-P-O-C is also cop spelled backwards. The cops almost blow their cover when it comes time for Detective Brown to do his duties as a groom. He reaches for the bride's garter and almost exposes her gun. The cops wait for the guest to get plastered. And then the band plays the song that signals it's bus time. When they played the song, I fought the law and the law won, that was a signal for all the police officers to arrest everyone here that had warrants for their arrest. Guests give up without a struggle. One dude thinks it's all a big joke. Pay attention. Boy, you got cute dimples when you get arrested, huh? Is this for real? What is marijuana? Cops score big. They arrest more than 60 people and confiscate $90,000. Meet Bob Hardy. And his roommate, Nick Jeffers. Like a couple of fun guys, huh? Today they're planning to kick someone's butt for stealing stuff out of their garage. After talking to my roommate, realized that that he had seen the paper boy rummaging through the carport in the past. And we sat around and talked it through and we realized that it had to be the paper boy. Damn, seems like you just can't trust no one these days. So how do you outsmart a paper boy? We came up with the plan of hiding in the yard debris only container and a moving box and setting out four items and getting up early before the paper boy would deliver the paper and hide and wait. The trap is set, but will it work? Saw the whole thing.
thing, him walking through and picking up on the items there. It was just pure excitement. I couldn't believe this was happening. I couldn't believe he was taking all the stuff. Busted big time. We caught him, we, we got out, we sat him down, and, and we just said, do you have our stuff? And, and he uh, readily admitted to having our stuff. They nailed their paper boy. Now what? We felt there's absolutely no need to prosecute. No um, sentence or formal indictment is going gonna, is gonna to be anywhere near to the, the feeling he had and the memories he has from this. Yeah. He won't be forgetting this anytime soon. Crime scene. A simple chest of drawers. What's going to be stolen? TV? Jewelry? Not in this show. More women's underwear. The first thing that I see on the video of him is the back of his head. I know him well enough to know him, you know, from behind, and I knew right off it was him. And even though we were suspicious for a few days, a um, couple, three days before that, um, I was still shocked that it was our neighbor. Yep, Kay and her husband live next door to a man who really, really, really likes Kay's underwear. He never took any money. He never took any, uh, you know, TV, VCR. He came in and took my uh, bras and my panties and, um, you know, and that's all that he ever took. We have no idea what this dude's doing with their lingerie. The police officer said that when they interviewed him, he said, I don't know why you have me here. You've got the wrong guy. I don't know what you're talking about. And then when they put the videotape in and showed him, the uh, police officer said that he told him, stop the tape. I did it. I don't want to see any more. Can't really blame you, dude. He got, like, totally overexposed. You're moving right along with Max Axe. Coming up. For some guys, sitting is just too complicated. Boy meets girl, boy has a fair with girl, boy's wife gets it all on tape. Rugby, the manly sport for the naked man. And party like it's 1990, oh, never mind, just party. If you still can't feel the love, watch our Max X list. Max X. We put the tele in television. Max X, you can run, but you can't hide. At Max X, we're an equal opportunity employer. So we support the rights of every man or woman to strip for a living. But this dude's scamming his insurance company. This gentleman had uh, worked for a company that bent over and picked up some boxes and as a result had a uh, minor low back injury. Does this dude look like he's hurting? Mr. Banana Hammock here is not only well enough to strip, he was also like totally exposed body surfing. Private Eye Sherry Howard helps crack the case for the insurance company. Perhaps there's a cure for low back pain. Maybe it is having dollar bills stuck in your underwear. Yep, that guy's going to need that cash in his marble sack because he ain't getting nothing from insurance. This dude in Texas is trying to just go about his business having an affair with his secretary. And he doesn't know it, but his wife has a private eye on him 24-7. We often get excited about catching somebody in an affair because it's our job. The guy rents an apartment. The routine that we found was that he would park his car in the garage and then let the girlfriend come over and pick him up in her car. And then they would drive back to her apartment for the evening, for the night. But the guy's wife isn't content with just video of him coming and going from his mistress's place. She wants the real dirt. Here they are dining together, playing tennis, playing golf, going to the movies, 
taking a late night romantic stroll. Now you gotta love this guy. His wife sees this tape and he denies he's having an affair. He claims that he and his secretary are only good friends. And the guy's wife Karen buys it. It wasn't until a couple of days later that I got some videotape of them kissing in the front seat of her car. I brought Karen into our office. We showed her what we had. She was fairly satisfied that the affair was pretty much nailed down. But she still felt that she wanted to get more evidence. She wanted to prove that shadow of a doubt that he was having an affair with this woman. She wanted to really nail his coffin shut. Her husband was scheduled to go out of town on a trip. She did not believe this. So she sent us back out again to see what was going on. Check out what's going on. The dude and his lady attend a wedding together. I got videotape of the subject and his mistress at the reception, feeding each other, talking, laughing, dancing, having a good time. I decided to go back down to my car to wait for them to leave. About 1.30 in the morning, the subject comes down with his mistress, apparently intoxicated, still drinking beer and laughing very loud. The girlfriend jumped up on the trunk and started embracing the subject in a very passionate manner. And she would allow him to stand between her legs uh, during these embraces, but they would always stop when another vehicle approached. Now remember, this dude's still telling his wife that he and his secretary are just good friends. When almost nobody else was around, the subject, with the girlfriend still on the trunk, slid his hands up her dress and removed her pantyhose. Hey, isn't that what good friends do? Well, the guy's wife finally confronts him with this tape, and you're gonna love this. From my understanding, he denied everything that happened in that tape up to the day the divorce was finalized, and he still has never admitted to having the affair. Now, this might look like an affair to a wife, but to a guy, come on, it's just being friendly. Rugby is a contact sport. Some spectators get really worked up watching it. This dude has a thing for guys in uniforms. Check out how they haul him off the field. No dignity here. So you think he learned his lesson? Nah. This dude can't contain himself at a rugby match. He's back. Only this time he's butt naked. Here's that ballsy move again. The striped shirt team is moving the ball up the field when suddenly, out of nowhere, our nudist makes a flying tackle. Amazingly, he doesn't get skewered by any cleated shoes. All you Australian sports fanatics, show us your nuts for rugby. Look up in the sky, it's Max X. Coming up, ladies and gentlemen, the future leaders of the world. When in the presence of a police officer, conduct yourself in a sensible manner. Whoops. Want to get a thousand guys' attention? And if that ain't hot enough for you, Stick around for our Max X list. Maximum exposure. Television's higher power. Max X. Stop, look, and listen. A mind is a wonderful thing to waste. Especially when you got a body like this. So when it comes time to pick a college, the most important thing to know is which one has the best parties. There you go. There's Jim Poorman Trenton majored in party with a minor in hangovers, which qualifies him to host a cable show that ranks the top 10 party schools. You're watching poor man's sexy bikini beach. In my lifetime, I've probably attended 10 to 20,000 parties. I think colleges will take any excuse to party. So will we. Here's poor man's picks for the best. Number 10, the University of Georgia. Check this out. Is she not a Max X chick or what? Poor man's pick for number nine? Ah, who cares? Here's number three, Michigan State University. 
these dudes get down with an attitude, they don't just party, they wreak havoc on the town. This was a scene after their basketball team lost the national championship game. Who says teenagers can't drink responsibly? 10,000 partiers and not a single designated driver. Hell, who needs a car? Don't look for Michigan State to make it to this lofty number three spot again. A no drinking law on campus was passed after this. We won't bore you with the number two school. Let's go right to the head of the class. The number one party school is Florida State. this year. But if you're looking for an up-and-comer, check out UCLA. They take top honors for creativity. What they did is they took a back basketball court and they actually, you know, made it into a gigantic pool and had a gigantic tube pumping out the foam every 10 minutes or so. I think it's the wildest, most creative party thing I've seen in the 90s. Party on, dudes! the value of a college education. Go grab a pen and paper for today's math lesson. Okay, it's time to count the beers, bikinis, and bare breasts. We'll start with the beers. You got 10 seconds to count how many people are drinking beer. Time's up. If you cut a 10, give yourself an A. Now it's bikini time. Again, you got 10 seconds to count all the bikinis. Ready? Go! Stop. If you cut at 11, give yourself another A. Now the best for last, the bare breast test. Put the time on the clock. We're only counting bare breast. Ready? Go. Stop the clock. If you counted 18 bare breasts, give yourself an F. The correct answer is there were zero bare breasts. They were all smiley faces. He was great. So good. He was just on the boot. That's the thing about college. You gotta watch out for those trick questions. This is better than getting a tattoo. Hey, this dude must be a college grad too. He was hauled into the East St. Paul, Canada police station. Suspected of drunk driving, you be the judge. Take your driver's license out of your wallet. He drops his wallet. Then he drops himself right into the wall. didn't feel a thing, but the wall is hurting real bad. In most parts of the world, that'd be enough to book a guy for DUI, but not in Canada. This cop wants more proof. So our dude has to take another test. The stand in one place exam. Stand up here. Just stand over here. Put your hands on the tape. On here. Whoa, 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 whoa. Nice. Dude has a perfect score going. The cop still wants more proof. So he asked him to take a breathalyzer test. No, no. This light has to come on and it's not coming on. You're not blowing into this. No. Do what the cop says. Lips on the tube and blow. Oh, yeah. He just scored three times the legal alcohol limit. Okay. Hey, dude, it took a while, but the cop finally has the proof he needs that you were drunk. This here's Max X. If it's reality you're looking for, go watch one of them other shows. If it's totally overexposed reality you want, hang out and watch our Max X list. It's 
sexless time. And the best, like, totally exposed video. Coming in at number three. Some folks just ain't too neighborly. Bill Kylie's trying to do some lawn work at his home. His teenage neighbor's trying to kick the crap out of him. Ow, Bill's getting pounded. Why's the dude got it in for Bill? I'm gay, um, and I think that this uh, became a problem for the neighbor. Bill also owns the house across the street. And that's where this camera is shooting the beating. Now I'm yelling, get off my property. He won't leave. That was my only defensive action, using the water there to spray him in the face, which is really all he needed to let go. Bill's taping because he thinks his neighbors have been doing some vandalizing. I had a uh, fag written on the sidewalk in front of my house. I had spit on my car door and windows. But now it's physical. The only thing that I could think to do was to cover my face. I came out of it with abrasions, uh, a cracked nose, and uh, chipped uh, vertebrae from being kicked so many times. When Bill brings charges, the kid's family says Bill started the fight. But the tape says different. It's fair to say that without the videotape, I might very well be the one in jail. The 17-year-old gets convicted of a hate crime and gets locked up for 10 months. It's a matter of an individual taking his hatred and putting it at the end of his fist. And fists don't make for good neighbors. Bill still lives there, but this family's moved out. Yeah, good riddance. Number two on the X list. Michelle, I agree. This wife is up to no good. She has a really, really nasty habit. That's her husband, Kirk's hard-earned cash going up her nose. So Kirk does what any self-respecting husband would do. He sets out to expose her. He plants a tiny camera inside the safe in his office. And recorded her daily activities while she was in my office, because that's where she spent most of her time. Her two favorite daily activities happen to be talking on the phone and snorting something that sure looks like drugs to us. Shortly after she snorted this line, my, my infant son came inside the office and uh, proceeded to play uh, about the desk and then gets on top of the desk just where she completed her, uh, her snorting. So Kirk does what any self-respecting husband would do. He files for divorce and custody of their son. But she ain't going down without a fight. I just, I just want my son, and I want what's half mine. Well, I want to leave his ass, and I want everything that I can get. I want that includes some get. stolen checks stashed inside the safe. Also, inside there, I've got to get out, is some treasury checks and some tax checks. I was involved in a scam, and it was against the government, and it was filing on dead people and collecting their tax checks and treasury checks when tax season came around. It would, be, it would look really bad for me if, it, if the safe was to be opened in court. So I need to open before court. I was never charged. So Kirk does what any self-respecting husband would do. He reports his wife to the feds. I was involved in a scam, and it was against the government. And the training um, department did take it seriously as far as her involvement and uh, proceeded to indict her on nine grand theft felony counts. She gets her divorce, but she also gets three years in prison. Rick gets full custody of their son. Moral? Keep your mouth shut. And open the P.O. boxes and have the checks into there. And your nose shut. Okay, so she ain't the world's greatest wife, but she ain't the worst. Coming in at number one on the Max X list. Those are the cries of a wife mourning the murder of her husband. Now, here's her true feelings. You want to kiss or you just want to beat up? I can beat him up. Yes, you can beat him up. So, so you want to kill? Yeah, I don't care what he does. Well, I'm telling you, as soon as he comes in contact with him, he better 
Quit killing me. Or took out. The wife just took out a hit on her husband. Only problem? The hitman she hires is an undercover cop. She becomes the target of a police sting. It kind of caught us uh, by surprise. And it isn't often that you get to participate in a, you know, a meeting such as this and to hear somebody so uh, casual, callous, cold-hearted talk about killing someone that we would all think is a loved one. After cops secretly tape the conversation, they show it to her husband. Oh, the man was in just total shock, which I'm sure any one of us would be. He um, just looked at it. He said he'd do whatever we needed to establish a case and bring it to a successful conclusion. Translation, bust the babe. First, police fake the husband's murder and snap some photos. We used a little bit of uh, ketchup from the local drive-in, uh, smudged some dirt on his face, on his clothing, laid him down in such a manner that it kind of appears he may have been either dropped from the car or a struggle right there, and he was shot. They drive her out to the scene to ID the body. He's, he's got a picture he wants me to have you look at and see if you identify the person. I hate to do it that way, but the person's already gone. They've already taken it. Now for the wife's Academy Award performance. <laughs> she sounds like she's really torn up. They take her to the cop shop to claim his personal effects. Then it's nailing time. As a result of talking to Bill, that you were going to be placed under arrest for solicitation for murder for hire. What? That's a lie! How would that work? I haven't been nowhere. I go to work and come home. I'm with my kids. I'm at work. That is it. That's all I do. Yes, good. Is she good or what? But now comes her toughest role yet. The husband's gonna pop his head into the room. Let's see old grieving widow improvise her way out of this. I, I second of all, second of all, hang on. Your husband's not dead. I don't think I can imagine. He's not! No. He's not! Oh, 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 oh. Come on. Hubby won't go near his wife. He hangs back till cops get her to confess. I did! I worked with my own wife! The wife gets sentenced to hard time. When she gets out, we got a plan for her. Go to Hollywood, baby. Max X, like totally exposed.